attention. I think you're going to use that. I'm going to take this off. Let's give her applause. One is eliminated. One is eliminated in 
each round. Now, the, the scary part is why it's called Games of Science, like Games of Thrones. <laughs> is because the first round, they are allowed to speak for 15 seconds. So you have 15, 16 people, two of them on stage, and the jury has to decide, after each one of them has spoken for 15 seconds, they have to decide who goes next to the next round, when they speak for 30 seconds. And then the eight people go to four, and they speak for 90 seconds, and only the two finalists get Three minutes. So it's it's horrible. <laughs> Someone said it's like trying to make to to select who's going to attend uh, to, to become part of the national football team by watching a couple of kids run around the the, the, the terrain for like fifteen minutes. It it doesn't tell you a lot. But on the other hand, Someone told me, someone who went through this competition who was very good and was eliminated, the first person to get eliminated, told me, you know what I realized? In real life, if you don't gather their interest, capture their attention in the first seconds, they are not going to listen to you for 30 seconds, 3 minutes, or 3 hours. So, it was a very useful insight. And I got it from playing games in open space where you, you, you listen for, 30, uh, for 60 seconds and then you reflect in 30. You cut it more. And the training doesn't work like that. The training trains them to think that starting with all the details and making to the, what's essential in that one. So, um, I lost my train of thought. In order to make it interesting, I came to this space and I asked, how can we make that work for people so don't, they don't feel like they have lost after the first 15 seconds? And that uh, it was Eric Hansen who suggested we do the same thing that we do when we play uh, rock, paper, scissors. If someone beats you, basically you become his biggest or her biggest supporter. So by the end of the competition, each of the finalists has behind them half of the team and they support and they give feedback and they have a break where they get good feedback and support them. So it keeps you engaged. So that's a specific insight that came out. But then imagine being a jury. How do you decide? How do you put that weight on your shoulders? And what I, something that I'm also learning here from Kev Hopper the power of good questions. You know, I don't have a list of my criteria for the jury members, I have one question. Who do I want to hear from more? And with this question, basically, it's not about how the research is, how worthy I had someone who, I had once a guy who was doing, using artificial intelligence to assess the impact of COVID on lungs. And someone who was researching how to make the structures look prettier for glass buildings. And the guy who, got, who was studying how to make the structures look prettier, which is less worthy, let's be honest. It's like, yeah, you can take better pictures, better selfies if the structure is not so bad. He won, despite, because the other guy said, I use artificial intelligence to assess how big the damage is. That was clear, I didn't need to hear more. It didn't make it compelling to, to, to work like that. So what I'm showing you is that has happened in here and that has helped. The team from Prague taught me the best exercise to open it for uh, people who have never done it wrong, because they have never done it wrong. They are researchers, people who have gone through college, master degree and now they are doctoral students, postdoctoral students, they have focused on the research. We do hello, goodbye, hello, the game, if you want, they will show it to you. It's perfect, it's easy. You just say hello to people watching them in the eye. But it's crazy as well and they got used to that. So what has happened is that with the support of this community, the training has turned into a joyful experience for all those involved. It was fun 
and funny. And I uh, said yesterday that what I, I saw looking at the pictures is that people were more engaged and they looked happy when they were playing games than when they were doing things that were like, oh, talking. They, they like being part of this community and they are still part of this community. What I'm doing is I'm working with the people who have gone through this as trainers and I'm training them and I want the next step. And the problem that I'm struggling with is what is next? Because all of them are like, yes, I get it. I love it. What are we doing? And I have a community of more than 100 people who are ready and willing to do more. And that has happened through this inclusive way of addressing issues based on uh, the things that we are doing. It's not applied improvisation, it's this community. And I've got a lot of insights, I've got a lot of ideas, I've developed a lot of things, a lot of... I tried things on in this community because it's generous and these people who go through this kind of uh, experience that's extremely competitive. They learn something else. They learn the power of being together and working together. And that's something that I've got from here. We never work alone. That's one of the key things that we know from working in this environment, from doing open space. It's something that's so powerful. And the other thing that is an organizing thing we have is we have a clear focus on the experience that people are having while they are doing it. It's not for the jury, it's not for the audience, it's for the people going through that. So, before going away, I want to thank you all, invite you to support me more <laughs> in that. And I have one more ask for you. I have postcards to people who have taken part in that. If you want to send an encouraging message to them, I can share them and you can post them as well. And this is the terror animal who has been with us and he has his own Facebook page. <laughs>